word where God's word is pointing at certain situations in your life certain issues in your life and you are holding on to them not letting go I'd like you to let go this morning and say yes to his will tell God I'm not about to have it my way but I want you to have your way in my life prune me where you need to prune me correct me where you need to correct me until my life becomes what you have designed it to be until I'm shaped and molded into your perfect will for my life I see yes to your will Lord. to your will Thank you for your awesome presence in our midst. Father, speak to us today. Give us understanding of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Please take your seats. You're welcome to church. It's good to see you. It's good to have you in service this beautiful Sunday morning. I'd like you to be an extension of my hand to your friend and welcome them to church. And say you're welcome to church this morning. Uh, give your neighbor a warm smile. They might, have, they might have had it rough throughout the weekend. And your smile may just be the healing that they need today. So give your neighbor a healing smile. I have told you that anytime you sit behind somebody in church and the person is frowning, you can change your seat. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is expected to be what? Fullness of joy. Somebody say, I'm glad. Because Jesus loves me. Say, I'm glad. Jesus loves me. I'm not hearing any sound from this area. I'm glad. Jesus loves me. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to see your rejoicing. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to Jesus. I know exam is starting tomorrow, but you will pass. So that should give you joy. And for those who have graduated from school, they will know, looking back in retrospect, that exam is actually nothing in life. Because there are many more things you will face in life that is bigger than exam. So when they see undergraduate Jutta are very fearful around exam time, they just smile like, well, you ain't seen nothing yet. Lagos is more than exam. Abuja is greater than any exam. Paying house rent in this economy and having fail in your car in this economy is more than any exam. Alright. Uh, we started last week a conversation on the subject of character it's a month of character development character restoration and recovery and god is very concerned with our character and i know you know that man looks at the outward man relates with you based on your character if your character is not right you won't have the right relationships and you won't have the right results in your life. If your character is not right, you would not attract the right relationships and you would not have the right results in your life. Listen to me. What people say about you matters on this side of eternity. It does not matter in heaven, but it matters on earth. Uh, I remember our father used to say that one of the prayers they pray about their business, their school, is that glorious things are spoken of them. Because what people feel, what people think, and what people say about you 
actually matters a lot. And we say that our character is actually expressed in our behavior, in our words, and our action. Last week, we started by talking about the foundation for a godly character. And there were two building blocks for that foundation last week. The first was the love of God. That the love of God will put restraint in our hearts such that when we walk in love, our character will definitely be pruned. There are certain things that you won't do because you walk in love. We saw that and we read that extensively last week. We also saw last week subtle character dysfunctions that we may not even pay attention to. We looked at gossiping, we looked at uh, envy, jealousy, and all of those subtle things that we may not pay attention to, but they are expressions of bad character. We also considered that the work of the Holy Spirit in us is a foundation for godly character. The Bible says it is God that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And I must tell you at this point that the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer is basically twofold. The work of the Holy Spirit in a believer is basically twofold. One, we have the work of the Holy Spirit upon a believer, which is supposed to be number two anyway. And the first one is the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer. The result of the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer is the manifestation of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, temp all those fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 23. Those are the manifestation that the Holy Spirit is working in you. But the one we pay attention to is the work of the Holy Spirit upon a believer. Which we see in the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. So you see somebody speaking in tongues. You see somebody prophesying. You see somebody working miracles. That is why you can see a miracle worker telling lies. You can see a talk talking believer who still... When he says good morning, you have to check your time because it may be evening. You may see a, a, a prophet prophesying, yet envy, jealousy is, is, is loaded in their heart because it is one thing to allow the Holy Spirit to walk in you and it is one thing to yield to the work of the Holy Spirit upon you. The work of the Holy Spirit upon you is to allow you to do something for the Lord and you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be what? A witness. But the Spirit of God works in us to change us and to make us be a child of God. Be a believer. So the work of the Holy Spirit in you helps you to be a child of God. The work of the Holy Spirit upon you helps you to do for God helps you to do things for God, but the work of the Holy Spirit in you helps you to be like Christ. Help you to be who God wants you to be. In the Old Testament, when the priest garment was being constructed, there was an instruction that the Lord gave to Moses. And he told Moses that the garment, the, the tip of their garment, the arm of the garment should be there should be an arrangement of a bell, a tiny bell, and a pomegranate fruit. So you will see a bell, and you will see a fruit. If it is all bells, and the man is walking, when he moves, what are you going to have? Noise, brah, wara, 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 all around. But because it is sandwiched with a fruit, it modulates the sound it moderates it that it is not making noise and what is the implication of that the bells symbolizes the gift of the spirit which is the working of the Holy Spirit upon that is man's servant and the pomegranate fruit represent 
the work of the Holy Spirit in the person, which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. No wonder, First Corinthians chapter 13 says, If I speak the tongues of angels, which is what? The gift of the Spirit, which is the bell, and I do not have love, which is the fruit of the Spirit, which is pomegranate in that picture. The Bible said, I am like a what? Sounding symbol. I am a noise maker. That is exactly who we are. When your tongues is what wakes your roommate up in the morning, but you still don't have character. Everybody in the hostel, everybody in your neighborhood, yes, your voice was in the morning. You wake them up. But nobody can touch your slippers. You will curse them. Nobody can carry your bucket of water. You will lay curses on them. The Bible says you are like a sounding cymbal. It is more important for you to allow the Holy Spirit to walk in you than it is important to even give yourself up for service in the house of God. So we established those two last Sunday. Today we are going to look at two other building blocks for a solid foundation in building godly character. The third one, which is the first for today, is community. Community. Which simply talks about where you belong. With whom you spend the bulk of your time. There is a popular saying that has been going around from the mouth of uh, Apostle Joshua Selman. And he said it this way. If there are five fools around you, you didn't count well. There are six. Because you are the sixth. If you are in the midst of five fools, for you to be comfortable in their midst, you are like them. Because there is that law of attraction. There is that law that water will always find its level. So, the people you belong to, the people with whom you spend most of your time, would greatly reflect in your character disposition. It will greatly reflect your character. If you are going to change your character... You have to change your community. You have to change your association. A child that is raised in a house where mommy used the children to tell lies to the father to get money. The mother writes a market list, an inflated market list, and the child knows it is hard for you to tell that child that lying is not good. It is hard for that child to grow up knowing that this is wrong because mommy does it and somehow that validates it. So the community that we belong to has great effect on our character development. I used to say this, when we go for youth service, when I went for youth service, when everybody goes for youth service, one thing is sure, within 21 days I'm going to spend on camp, water will find its level. Those people who are addicted to drugs, smoking and the rest of that, within three days, they will find themselves. The buyer will find the seller. The sellers will find the buyers. And the smokers and drinkers will find themselves. Those who are the born again people, before time, you would just be seeing five people praying together. They didn't know themselves from anywhere. Water will just what? Find this level. Ron's girls will find themselves. Runner boys will find themselves. Because for every Ron's girl, there is a running boy. Running mad everywhere. For every runs girl, that is what? A running boy. Running away from destiny. Running towards destruction. So you always find its level. Just drop 
200 persons in the same place. Before you know it, they will form cliques. They will form association. Which is a reflection of their hearts. A reflection of what is right as far as they are concerned. Therefore, if you are going to change you, you must change your community. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33. Do not be deceived. I love that introduction. We deceive ourselves a lot. And I'm not doing it to, I'm just, no, 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 I'm just there. I'm not doing it. I'm not part of them. It's a lie. If you are with them, you are part of them. I repeat. If you are with them, consistently with them, always with them, you are part of them. That is why when policemen come to arrest people, everybody they find at that scene, especially Nigerian police, if the day you go to visit your friend, because there is light in your friend's house and you go with laptop, and that's the day they want to come and raid people that are into internet fraud, your rule, your friend is into internet fraud. You are not. You just went there to use electricity. When the policeman enters that house, they will carry all of you first. Maybe after three days, you cannot explain yourself that I'm not part of them. Oh, I just came to charge some ladies who went to visit their boyfriends who didn't know what their boyfriends are into. They are only to chop money. They don't know how you are making the money. When they arrest you, they will arrest all of both the spender and the maker of the money. Both the breadwinner and the bread eater will be arrested together because they expect you to ask, Where does this bread come from? There is a name they call it in their criminal criminal law. Accomplice. But that's a very, very serious, very, very interesting names they call they call those situations. Bible says, Don't deceive yourself, even if you were well raised. Evil company will do what will corrupt good habits, it will corrupt you will think that good habits will influence what evil company you can't be smarter than God who wrote this say I will change them mm -mm. you can't be speak. God said it is them that will do what they will change you it is the effect of one bad egg in an omelet you have already broken about 10 eggs and the last one you broke was the bad one how will you salvage the remaining 10 all gone that's exactly how it is. Move to the next verse. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But someone will say, how are the dead raised up? And in what body did they come? Let's stop there. God is telling you today to change your character you have to change your company. So what was God's prescription for his people? Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Who do you hang around? Who do you hang out with? Who do you call your buddies? Your guys? My men? My G's? My besties? They have different names you call them and when we see them we can tell who you are. They even tell us in relationship, a guy comes. You see, the reason why there are so many problems in marriages and relationships these days, unlike before, is that before it is a village matter. Everybody is in the village. We know your family, we know their tendencies. But now all of us met in Lagos is black market. Yes, it's black market. 
You know, there is time they do a promo and they will say, buy this television, 2-5, but no testing. No what? No testing. When you get to unplug it, if it work, it work. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. No testing. Why is it so difficult now? Because we pick them on the road. We don't even do due diligence. Someone said he's working in Shell. Does he not have colleague? You never bother to find that. You just had Shell. Your head's work. Say he's working in Shell. He's working in Shell. He said he's living in VI. Is he living alone? Shouldn't you have neighbor who have been seeing him in that house? So if you want to do a check on someone and know who they are, find out their friends. Understudy their friends. Who their friends are is who they are. Simple and short. Who their friend, what their friend represents is who they are. I remember that even when I was getting married, my father-in-law, normally is he not the man that should go and go to the family wife's family to do visitation so after we have gone to do introduction they've known my family they looked for a way and came to our house to be sure that we exist yes they came I think it was one, or one week or two weeks to my to our wedding the, my father-in-law and the mother-in-law came to, in fact the mother-in-law entered my mother's room to be sure whether we have calabash we hung on the wall because my son name is Fadei it has something to do with Ifa in those days so whether the Ifa is still whether these people are just using David in front to cover the Fadei behind you know <laughs> are they still are they really born again people because you know my father-in-law said that when they hear Yoruba as what comes to them all of us are fetish because hardly we use a Yoruba movie with a Babalao inside so it feels like all of us are fetish so she, they, they had to come and verify they had to come and find out the Bible said this is the prescription for you to guard your character. Not forsaking. Not forsaking. The assembly of what? Believers. Assembly of ourselves together. As is the manner of some. But exhorting one another. And so much. The more as you see the day approaching. Which means. We keep coming together to form a community of believers. This is what puts restraint on us. Many of you cannot live in the same compound with your pastor. You can't. Some of you, you will live in a place that for us to visit you, we will we'll give up on the road. You live far from everybody. Nobody can check up on you. Nobody can just walk into your house and knock your door. Most of the time, it's because we have something to hide. That's why we go and hide ourselves beyond the river Jordan. We live in the valley. Oh man, far interior. See, I live downtown. Because there is, you don't want to be accountable. It's even so bad that when people want to hold you accountable, you begin to say they are judging you. You, you, you enter the room by nine o'clock with a lady. They came and knocked and said, with they, said they, are, they are not judging you, they are checking up on you. They want to be sure you are still in faith. They want to protect you. They want to be sure you will not slip into sin and fornication. Said they are, they are judging me. They are not judging you. That's the, that's the reason why they are there. They are your policemen. The Bible says there, as many as them that received the word gladly were added to the church. You must belong to the community of believers. It does not have to be a mega church, but it must be a community of believers. The problem we even have in mega churches is that we belong to mega churches and we belong to nobody because we walk in and walk out nobody even know we came nobody know we're there nobody's holding us accountable is anything bad with mega churches no but many mega churches have created structures 
to ensure that there are small, small clusters where you must belong, where you are held accountable, where restraint is placed on you. That there are certain things you will have done because you know a brother is living by my side. A sister may knock on my door. I will protect myself. I will restrain myself from those things. God set it up that way as a way to put restraint on us. Because if we are left to ourselves, we will destroy ourselves. A child that is left to himself will destroy himself, including a child of God. A child that is left to himself will do what? Will destroy himself. One of the things that is causing decay in our community now is that there has been a lot of restraint placed on parenting. It is even now more difficult to correct your child. We are asked what God expects from a parent to a child is instruction, not advice. I've not seen anywhere where the Bible says advise your child. You instruct them. Their responsibility is to do what? Obey. That's why the Bible says, obey your parents. Children are to be instructed, not to be advised. You know, you say, ah, I say, somebody will say, ah, I, I'll be the friend of my children. I want to be my children's friend. There is a stage that you can't be your children's friend yet. Before you can be your children's friend, they have crossed 18. You are supposed to be their parent, not their friend. Because friend tolerates. Parents don't what? Tolerate. Parents correct, not tolerate. Don't carry that thing. I came back from, from school one day because I was a labor prefect. And as a labor prefect, you are the one that will compliance officer so in my school it is wrong for women for ladies to wear big earrings you can wear earrings but it must not be bigger than your earlobes once it is dangling we seize it you must wear a brown shoe not a black shoe you must wear a white socks and nothing more so i stand by the gate as you are walking you never know i'm behind the gate as you are walking in i see your say auntie come and i will collect just one ear to render the last one useless and many people actually took it from their mother's jewelry box to come and parade in school so i collected those things and at the close of work at the close of school that day i didn't remember to drop them in the vice principal's office so i put them in my bag now in my house they don't even wear earring let alone say they want to go and give my sister they did not even open their ears let alone so it was of no use it was not stealing it was that I forgot. So I got to my, I don't know what my father lost that night that I was looking for in my bag. So he opened my bag and saw it. He came and woke me up. What is it in your bag? This, because hearing itself was a taboo in our house, let alone carrying it in mass into the house. So it, tomorrow I explained to him what happened. He said, tomorrow, first thing when you get to school, return them. Yes, sir. Go to school, school activities, submit assignment. This I forgot. So I came back home, innocent me. I didn't still remember. Drop my bag, innocent me. I didn't still remember. At lunch, innocent me. I didn't remember. At dinner, innocent me. I didn't remember. I had the God to sleep, innocent me. I didn't remember. It was in the midst of my sleep. I heard fear. The second one, fear. So as I opened my eyes, I saw my dad with my bag. I knew why I was being beaten. I can't even beg. Because in my house, you can't even come home with the cover of a biro that does not belong to you. But you will see parents send their children to school and you are giving them pocket money of only 20,000 naira a month and they stayed in school for four months and they returned home and bought you a Gucci bag and in your mind you are eating the fruit of your labor you see your child come back home 
with dresses that you know with the pocket money you gave she cannot afford your son came back home with an iPhone 13 what more than your salary for 6 months and he came back home and you just smile and say oh, God is blessing my children no you have to ask where did you get this how did you get this because God put that structure in place to build good see every thief that we know today came from a house have you even found out in politics today if EFCC arrests someone who they said has stolen government fund their constituency member we say it is witch hunting it is only the other people that said he's a thief where he came from is not a thief as far as they are concerned because he has stolen money to help us the only point if, if, they, if for example they arrest an evil person everybody say ah it's what people they arrest they will know if, if your family member heard that you stole money in Abuja and they summon you to village meeting and said if you don't return that money we will go and consult something nobody will steal in Abuja but because when you steal in Abuja you come and tar road you come and share rice and they will collect they did not ask you as an house of assembly member how much is your salary where are you seeing this thing you are sharing from where come sit down where are you where everybody will collect it cannot be it's our son our able son our good son that is why it will continue said as many as were believed as many that believe were added to the church the church is supposed to be that body that helps you to maintain a godly character the bible said concerning daniel daniel said i will not defile myself with the portion of the king's meat assuming shadrach meshach and abednego were eating it it would be more difficult for him not to eat it it's more difficult that's why corporate fasting is easier than private fasting if all of us are fasting out together in one place no matter how you'll be able to fast the fast but as you, have, you are the one that told yourself by yourself you want to fast you didn't tell anybody by 12 you say, I, 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 I said I did not tell anybody I did not tell anybody you eat but Daniel said I will not defile myself Shadrach said I will not defile myself Abednego said I will not defile myself by the time they smell the aroma coming from the king's they say we will not defile ourselves let's, let's pray small let's pray small Father Lord Father it helped them I told you of my roommate in school who got an apartment of 33,000 that time 33,000 house rent was big money he paid 30,000, 3,000 era for, for agents. But there is a girl living close by who they have been eyeing each other. So we saw him one day pack his bag. I think he slept in that house for two nights or so. I can't remember that one night or so. He packed his bag and came to our house. He said, what happened? He said, David, if I stay alone, I will commit. So he came and squatted with us. We were already three in making us four. He had a room to himself. But if I stay alone, I will commit. We are asked, you, you left company of people to go and stay alone, to be able to commit so that nobody will catch you. He said, I, I, I just like my privacy. It's a lie. It's a lie. I just, I just, I just like, it's a lie. You know you will be coming. He will be visiting. He works in Abuja. So anytime he comes to town, he will be able to have a place to stay. We will not defile ourselves. That community, you must build it for yourself. You must intentionally surround yourself with the people that will build the right character in you. You can't be staying around ladies who are discussing who up, who up, who up. That's what they are talking about. One man is coming to town. You can't be in that group and say you are, you, are, you, are, you are trying to walk uprightly. One day when the robber is the road and there is no money, that will be the first thing on your mind. But if you surround yourself with people that anytime they don't have money, they pray first and they think of what can I do with my hands. That's the first thought that will come to your mind. When you stay around people that uh, your, your 95% of your conversation is gossip. He's talking about some people, somebody else, in a derogatory manner, in a destructive manner. 
It will continue. Any character trait you want to break, you have to first of all remove yourself. You can't be, you can't be saying, I want to stop smoking and you keep following them to the club. You can't stop smoking. All your friends around you are into sports betting. You say, I want to stop betting. You can't stop betting. You can't stop betting because when you think you want to stop, they will come back and be sharing testimony. Chai! Today, not today. 200, 200,000. I used 2,000 to get 200,000. Something in you will wake up again. Desire will come up again. You now come back and run and meet pastor. Pastor, I don't know. I've been fighting this addiction. You are not fighting anything. You have been enjoying the addiction. If you are fighting it, you will remove yourself from that group. Even if you want to achieve excellence academically. Remember my wife telling me that when she was in secondary school, there was a friend that she befriended then. And her academic story changed. In fact, that lady graduated from Unilag with 5.0 CGPA, systems engineering. Five, that means she did not fail a course. 5.0. Not Ipa Road Polytechnic, Unilag. Five point, go on, it's, it's, her name is, I can't remember her name now. Five point zero straight, PhD, US. No master in between from that to PhD. Straight up. He said when she became a friend in his university, in the secondary school, her own academic journey changed. It just changed. But your friends are the people you put sit down to discuss. See, hey, you guys see me, I got the wow, wow. You will move. You will move. You will never move. That is why you will even see that learning is better done in a community. You want to learn any skill, go to a hub where six, seven persons are learning graphic design at the same time. You will learn faster than learning by yourself. There is the strength that comes with community because iron sharpens iron. One will chase a thousand, two will chase tens of thousand. That's why you will see businessmen. They are always together as businessmen. It's always that friendship. By the time you will be thinking, oh, eh, tell me your third dollar, and you'll be thinking, Dangote, they are actually friends. They all know themselves. They have a relationship. When they see them, that is what they are always discussing money. That's why they are making it. It is that network. You must build it, and you must build the one that will help you form a good character. When the Bible talks about consecration, sanctification, what was he really talking about? Come ye out of them and be separate. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. You are in the world, but you are not of them. Somebody say, I yeah. hear. Number two, that helps us to have restraint foundation for godly character is the fear of God. Somebody say the fear of God. Many people don't know exactly what it is when we talk about the fear of God. You know, young ladies will say, I want to marry a man who has what? God-fearing man. They don't even know what God-fearing man so I met a pastor during the weekend and he said one day something happened him and his wife we were quarreling hugging or something and she was, he was angry and in the middle of the anger the Holy Spirit told him kneel down and beg your wife he was right he said kneel down and beg your wife Hi. so he knelt down and begged his wife and peace was restored he said he went to ask God, God why you tell me to kneel down he said well which one do you want? You want to be right or you want to have peace? If you want to maintain your right, you will not have peace. And you are the one that determines the peace of the house. If something happens and you escalate it, there won't be peace. If something happens as opposed to be escalated and you pour water on it quickly. So I learned something from him. See, when we say the fear of God, I want a man that fears God. What you are really saying is that 
there is a man if the man you marry one day one day something will spark in everybody's head do you hear what i said one day, one day, something will come that you want to arouse a negative emotion, an anger or something. But in the midst of that anger, you are sure that he will hear a voice behind him telling him the right thing to do. That is your greatest defense. He carries his key, jumps out of the house, drove off. But you are sure that as he's going, God will talk to him and he will respond to God and come back home. That's your greatest defense. That's what we call the fear of God. That people have the awe of God to comply with God's instruction. To comply with his word. And I know no matter how he travels, I'm not there. Even though one lady is doing gala 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 in, in, her, in his front, somehow, I know he fears God. If you think it is you they fear most, it's a lie. See, I will be a tough woman so that he will fear me. <laughs> you know they fear women like that. Somebody that does not fear God will fear you. Answer me. Somebody that does not, what can you do? Somebody who does not fear God, you can only do within what you can see. The man does not fear God who sees him even if you cover duvet. He will not fear anything. No restraint at all. So it is the fear of God. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. Media. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse number 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. To hate pride and arrogance. And the evil way. And the perverse mouth. That's the fear of God. The fear of God is to hate what God hates. And love what God loves. That's the fear of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. Therefore, he's talking to believers here. Since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace. By which we may serve God acceptably. How? With reference and godly fear. 29. For our God is a consuming fire. The fear of God put a restraint on us. The fear of God is having reference for God. It is intentionally living your life knowing that God is with you. Like I used to say, there are certain things you will not do if pastor is there. How much more if God is there and God is there. <laughs> I used to have a story. I don't know how true that story is. That the man was carrying a wrong girl. He's a married man and was trying to hide. So... He thought I should, I should leave town and go and hide in one hotel where nobody can find me. So on entering the hotel, at the counter of the hotel, he saw a tract that reminded him that he should not do what he's doing. He ignored the tract. That's ah, kind of rubbish. Paid. Then got into the room. As he's trying to back off the thought of the tract, he saw only by by Gideon's looking at him and he looked as if God's eyes was on them watching him he carried handkerchief covered the Bible that the Bible should not look at him then he switched on the TV here was a pastor you are there carry somebody as his wife he just knew that where shall I hide before the presence of God that is true it may not be that literal in your own situation but when you are conscious that God is watching me, when you are conscious that God does not love this thing, and you have regard for God, I have told you, some unbelievers have more regard for God than some of us believers. How do I know? Certain things that we even do inside church. You see an unbeliever, when they are praying, 
they are praying. They drop their sleepers there. Somebody is carrying the sleeper, they don't mind. I'm telling you, they are praying. Anything is happening, they don't care. But until they are done, in their heart, they have regard for God. I told you a story that happened. A bus took off from Lagos going to Ibadan. And the driver was a bad guy in the eyes of everybody because before they entered, he took Baraga, took this one, top it with that one. So everybody saw the man as, ha, now wow. Then there was this holy woman in the, back, in the car who said, let us pray. He's coming back, sang, prayed, and preached. Then as they were approaching redemption camp, which was just outskirt of Lagos, there was this serious hold up traffic because Redeem Camp was having program. So the whole place was jam-packed. This woman who just prayed and preached said, this nonsense man of God has started this is program again, causing hold up. Now that's a child of God. Calling another, even if you don't agree with the pastor, you should have regard for the God that the pastor serves. Guess what? The driver that we thought was an unbeliever packed and told the woman, Madam, since you have used your mouth to speak against the man of God, you can't continue with us in this bus because all of you have you are now against God. In case God wants to fight you, and all of us now enter. This I'm telling you is, is a true life story. The man counted the woman's transport fare that he paid and returned and said, Come down, let's go in peace. Who has the fear of God? As I said, tongue talking is not the fear of God. The size of your Bible is not. You you go to secretariat. They start a meeting with prayer. End it with prayer. Lie in between. Lies in between. The same people that are leading prayer in those offices are the same people hiding files. Hiding people's promotion files. Hiding people's appointment files. And you'll be looking for it. They will even join hands with you to pray with you. Go from prayer meeting to prayer meeting. No character. They see lizard on the wall. They play. Because even inside their heart, there is suspicion. They suspect everything. They suspect flight. They suspect bed. They suspect anything that flight. They suspect inside you. There is something wrong. Go. The fear of God must be in our heart as believers. You see people enter church, enter church like this. They are still testing their boyfriend. They are still, they are still inside the church. No fear of God. Somebody will enter church, still still inside the church. I want to hear of ushers stealing church money. Before they made them head ushers, they feel they had the fear of God. But it's not there. It is that thing that put a restraint on you. Oh, I can't do this. Look at what Joseph said. Genesis 39.9. Jacob does not, Joseph does not even have colleagues. He doesn't have a community. Because you may find yourself in a place where there is no community of believers. Only you. What will keep you? Joseph was alone in a strange land. No pastor, no Sunday school teacher, no parent, no brother, no sister. He said, there is no one greater than me in this house. Neither has my boss kept anything from me. Because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He saw God's eyes all over him and he was like, no, 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 I can't do this against God. There is that fear of God. You are an employee. What will you do when nobody is watching you? Will you, will you do the right thing? Will you steal money? Will you change the figure? They sent you to go and make procurement. It's one million. You wrote one point three million. You swallowed three. You even gave tight. People give people give tight of proceed of corruption, thinking that with that tithing you can cover the face of God. God said to obey is better than sacrifice. People steal money to come and roof church. We will sit under the roof, but you are not blessed. Because the people whose money you use, if they still cry to God for vengeance, he may yell. So why do bad things happen to good people? But we don't know. We are the ones that said they are good in the first instance. Yeah. There was a time they arrested uh, 
there was a time there was this serious kidnapping going on in the north. They arrested the kingpin of. I discovered that that man had a beautiful wife and three children. To us, he's a wicked man, but he is a loving father to his children. Holiday Dubai. Daddy, I want a Gucci shoe. He buys. His community people came out to protest that he has been sponsoring many people in school. Have you asked where he's got the money? Collecting 100, 100 million naira ransom from poor Nigerians. The problem is fear of God. If you know that God is watching, if you hold God in your conscience, He will put restraint on you. Second Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. No respect for God again. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness. How do we perfect holiness? In the fear of God. So the fear of God is what helps us to walk in holiness. Luke 23 and verse 40. Luke 23 and verse 40. Verse 40, verse 40. Now, you remember this story? <laughs> Jesus was hanging on the tree. Who did not sin? Then on his right hand was a thief hanging. On his left was a thief hanging. Go back to verse 39. Let's hear what was coming out of the mouth of one of them. Then one of the criminals, criminal by himself, who were hanged, blasphemed Jesus, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself. The way many of us speak at pastors, our comments, they may be very wrong. Those people may be doing the wrong thing. But from your own statement too, we you know whether you have the fear of God. The reason why David did not kill Saul was not because he didn't have the opportunity. What restrained him was that he had the fear of God who put the anointing upon that man. Because the anointing upon Saul was the anointing of God. So he looked at the anointing and said, no, I can't touch the anointed of God. I may comment about what was done that was not right. But that is how I will speak against that person with understanding of the fear of God. This, this one is a criminal. He was saying, ah, look at Jesus. If he's your savior, save yourself. Look at what the other people see. There are two thieves. One has the fear of God. Let's hear the other thief. But the other thief answering, rebuked him saying, do you even fear God? Seeing you are under the same condition, you are still babbling your mouth. 31. And we indeed justly, for we received you. We are on this cross because we stole. Go, 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 go. But this man that we are talking about, he has done no wrong. Verse 42. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you get into your kingdom. Verse 43. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. What well, took him to paradise? Fear of God. No time for confession. No time for water baptism. No time for discipleship class. No time for maturity class. Straight up. Fear of God. Fear of God. Many of us who now say we receive Jesus don't have fear of God. Are you going to go to the same heaven this Monday like this? Fear of God we put restraint on you. There are certain things you want to do. You remember God is somewhere watching me. In fact, they used to sing a song when we were small. Jesus be camera lower on ya for bogbo on to banshe baba on Roman woe to bad dojo i da jo a o fi for to re o en o ya o shogbo. Now the song says. God is carrying camera snapping your picture on the day of judgment he will print the pictures and show you and you will be shocked some of us 
if they flash our thoughts concerning our friends, concerning the people we say, we, if they flash the thought of our heart on the screen, we will run away. We can't stay there. So that song says God is scanning camera, snapping you and keeping the record. That song is not right because God doesn't keep record of evil. But the songs help us to know that God is out watching. And one day we will give account. He's watching. You called them and you told them. See, when I was in school, I didn't have money. I, I could have been calling them at home and be inflating things. What hurt me was fear of God and love for my parents. You even tell them school fees is 40k. Before they found it, they did like this. You now say 45. You won't kill them. If we ask some of you how much you collected for school fees, we will not even know the school you are. Yes. We'll be shocked. We'll be shocked. And some of you, the problem will be that the, the current school fees you are, you are collecting is the new school fees that you know you want to introduce. I don't know how you will not explain at all. And the new school fees will now be published on newspaper. So you know. So your father will see it and say, You know your increased school fees too. <laughs> what am I reading? They said they have increased school fees to 60k. Oh God, you have been collecting 150. So even with the increment, I've not reached. No fear of God. And because we do it and we're able to cover our track, because we do it, nobody catches us. It is the fear of God in the heart of men that puts restraint. Deuteronomy chapter 10, my last scripture for today. Verse 12, verse 20, and verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Verse 20 to 21. You shall fear the Lord your God, you shall serve him. Don't let anybody deceive you that in this dispensation of grace, there is no fear of God. What we are not, we are not afraid of God, but we are still in awe of God. You cannot, because of grace, commonize God. You can't, grace does not commonize God. Grace didn't lower God. Grace just made us able to approach him. He didn't lower him. He just made us able to do what? To approach him. And in coming to his presence, we must still come with that reference. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him. You shall hold you, him. You shall hold fast and take all to his name. 21. He is your praise. He is your God. Who has done for you this great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. Ask neighbor, do you fear God? Ask again, do you really fear God? Do you have reference for God in your heart? The fear of God is seen in our obedience to Him. In our obedience to Him. In our compliance to His will. It's to hate what God hates. Dislike what God dislikes. Restrain yourself from what God does not want. Avoiding anything that will offend Him. Consciously acknowledging His presence in your life. And guarding it. Stand to your feet. Let us pray. Talk to the Lord this morning. In repentance, the ways that you have not expressed the fear of God, can you ask the Lord himself to forgive you? You know exactly where that word resonates with you. That I have not displayed the fear of God Ask the Lord himself to forgive you. Ask the Lord to have mercy upon you. Tell the Lord to help you to, ret to retrace your steps.
to order your steps aright according to his word. Ask the Lord this evening, this morning, be sincere before the Lord. Lord, I know there is no fear of God in my heart. But I ask for your mercy. There was a prayer we prayed on, on Thursday and I would like us to pray that prayer together. Psalm 139 verse 23 and 24. Psalm 139 verse 23 and 24. I remember very young, my mother made us to know this Bible verse now offhand. We read it. We read it. It's not that it really made sense to me. Because growing up, we just had this restraint. There are things that we were in the environment where it was done, but we couldn't just do them. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. That's how OKJ is put it. And see if there is any wicked way, any unrighteous way in me. Correct it, Lord, and lead me into the way of everlasting. Can we humble ourselves before the Lord and pray this simple prayer? I know you may be justifying yourself. No, me, I fear God. Me, I... Say, God, search my heart. Search my heart. And know if there is any wicked way in me. If there is any unrighteousness in me. Lord, lead me in the way of everlasting. Lead me to the path of righteousness. David even prayed and said, Lord, lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. There are certain things we don't do. Not because, well, they are bad. But because of his name's sake. Because we fear him. He put a restraint in our hearts. There is a reason we don't speak evil of our friend. There is a reason we don't, we don't gossip. There is a reason we are not envious of other people. Because of the fear. We know God sees our hearts. He sees beyond our actions. He sees our hearts. Thank you, Father. <coughs> In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, thank you again for your word this morning. Thank you for opening our eyes again to see the foundation on which godly character has been built. You showed us last week the love of God. You showed us the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Today, you have shown us community of believers. And you have shown us the power of the fear of God. Lord, let this month and these teachings, let them not stand against us on the day of judgment. Help us to make adjustment in our lives. Help us to come out of wrong associations, wrong friendships, wrong communities, wrong groups, wrong following on social media. Help us to come out of everything that is affecting our behavior. Everything that is staining our righteousness. Help us, Lord, to separate ourselves from them. In the name of Jesus. Your word says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, let those who name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Help us to live right. Help us to exhibit good character, high moral standards. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hopefully, next Sunday, by God's grace, I will teach on chemistry, character, and compatibility. It's a relationship Sunday. Help him talk about chemistry, character, and compatibility. It's time for us to give our offerings. I'd like you to package your offering. If you came to church with your tithes,